Ryle made up a mean name, a pejorative, derogatory label, a nickname for Descartes' dualism, and he calls it the dogma of the ghost in the machine. Okay, so now we're jumping forward in time from the 1640s to the 1940s to talk about an attack on Descartes' dualist theory of mind that comes from the philosopher Gilbert Ryle. The reading for today was some selections from Ryle's 1949 book, The Concept of Mind. And what we get is an attack on dualism. You'll remember dualism is the theory that the mind and the body are two distinct kinds of stuff. And that was Descartes' theory. And, uh, well, Cartesian, Cartesian just means having to do with this guy, Descartes, Cartesian. Okay, so in the first section of the reading, which is called The Official Doctrine, we get a characterization of Descartes' theory. Descartes' theory, Ryle is saying, is the official doctrine. So Ryle, when he's writing in 1949, is acknowledging that Descartes' theory is dominant. It's the official theory, the official doctrine, and he's going to attack it. So in this first section, he outlines what the dualist theory is. If you don't remember what that theory is, then go back to the video on Meditation 6. And in this first section, Ryle not only summarizes Descartes' theory, but he also summarizes an apparent problem for it. And maybe you'll recognize this problem. Here's what Ryle says. The actual transactions between the episodes of the private history and those of the public history remain mysterious, since, by definition, they can belong to neither series. Okay, what the hell does that mean? So, there's two things. There's the private history and the public history. These are Ryle's names for, well, the Cartesian understanding of the mind and the Cartesian understanding of the body, right? Ryle does this a lot, is he makes up all sorts of different nicknames for everyone else's, the components of everyone else's theories, right? The idea is that if you understand the mind in the way that Descartes does, then the mind is private. It's something that no one else can know about. You can tell someone what's going on in your mind, and so they can have indirect evidence of what's going on in your mind, or they can watch what you do with your body, right? we're only ever making educated guesses as to what's going on in other people's minds. So in that sense, the mind is private, but the body is public. Everyone can see, you know, where your body moves. And so Descartes is talking about the relationship between the mind and the body, and he says, to read it again, by definition, they, that is the transactions between them, can belong to neither series. That is, you know, Descartes thought that there was causal interaction between the mind and the body. And Ryle is pointing out this problem, and you'll recognize this problem. It's Princess Elizabeth's problem. The problem that, well, what are these causal relations, these transactions that go on between the mind and the body? Are they mental stuff, or are they physical stuff? If they're mental, then they can't move the body, Ryle thinks, following Princess Elizabeth, because, well, the mind is not in space, and so how could it ever move the body? And well, if these transactions are physical stuff, then how could they be moved by the mental stuff? That's the problem. Uh, if you don't recognize that problem, the problem of mental causation, as I called it in the other video, uh, if you don't recognize that problem, then go watch my video about Princess Elizabeth, who wrote a letter to Descartes in 1643 raising this problem, and still, uh, it's still a serious problem. I'll put a link to that video in the description or, or whatever. I don't know how this works. So let's move on to the second section um, in the reading from Ryle, and that section is called The Absurdity of the Official Doctrine. So from the title of this section, we know what Ryle thinks of Descartes' theory. Descartes' theory is what he's calling the official doctrine, and Ryle thinks it's absurd. He thinks there's a mistake, and he's going to, in this section, tell us what the mistake is. Here's what he says to open the section. Such, in outline, is the official theory. Okay, pause. So that's the first sentence of the second section. He's just summarizing what happened in the last section is he outlined Descartes' theory. He outlined dualism in the previous section. Then he goes on to say, I shall often speak of it with deliberate abusiveness 
as the dogma of the ghost in the machine. Ryle made up a mean name, a pejorative, derogatory label, a nickname for Descartes' dualism, and he calls it the dogma of the ghost in the machine. A dogma is something that you're just supposed to believe without questioning it, and the idea is that Descartes thinks that there's a ghost, that's the soul or the mind, and it's inside of and controlling a machine, the physical body. Okay, that's the Cartesian picture. Ryle likes to make fun of it, and now he's going to attack it. The next sentence is, I hope to prove that it is entirely false. That is, the official doctrine, Cartesian dualism, is entirely false. And false, not in detail, but in principle. Ryle thinks that Descartes is making a certain kind of logical error, which he calls a category mistake. And so what Descartes does is first he gives a bunch of examples of this kind of mistake, category mistakes. These are examples that don't have anything to do with the mind and the body or anything like that. They don't have anything to do with Cartesian dualism. They're just examples to get you onto the idea of, oh, that is a kind of mistake. And then he goes on to say, well, this is exactly the kind of mistake that Descartes is making. So he gives four examples. Okay, so the four examples, and they happen back to back to back to back on pages 34 and 35 of the reading, right? There, it's an example involving someone who visits a university, um, a child who's watching a military parade and they see, the child sees a division go by. Um, then there's an example involving, I don't know how to say this French phrase, esprit de corps, uh, which just means team spirit. And then an example involving the British Constitution. We're not going to go through all four of these examples. We're just going to go through the most famous one, which is the example of a university visitor. I'm going to read Ryle's whole description of this example. We're going to talk it through and make sure we understand what, the cat what a category mistake is. Then we're going to apply it to Cartesian dualism. Also, if you're taking this course you know, in actual reality, you should pay attention to the child and the military division example. I might put a question on the exam where you have to demonstrate that you understand how this is an example of a category mistake, even though I'm not going to explain it here. You just, you know, understand my explanation of the university visitor example and then, and then apply it to that, to that case. Here's what Ryle says on page 34. A foreigner visiting Oxford or Cambridge for the first time is shown a number of colleges, libraries, playing fields, museums, scientific departments, and administrative offices. I'll just pause there to explain what a college is at Oxford and Cambridge, right? So you have the whole university, and then the students live in different sort of social units, um, and those are the colleges. The colleges are where the dorm rooms and the dining halls and the college bar and the chapels and that sort of stuff, those are associated with the colleges, and then there's, you know, the whole university, which has a university-wide library and all sorts of other stuff. Anyway, we're now going to get the the mistake, the category mistake, this visitor to Oxford or Cambridge is going to make a mistake. Here's the mistake. He then asks, but where is the university? I have seen where the members of the colleges live, where the registrar works, where the scientists experiment and the rest, but I have not yet seen the university in which reside and work the members of your university. Okay, that's the mistake. Some visitor goes to Oxford University, right, sees all of these buildings, and then asks, but where's the university? You haven't shown me the university yet. It has then to be explained to him that the university is not another collateral institution, some ulterior counterpart to the colleges, laboratories, and offices which he has seen. The university is just the way in which all that he has already seen is organized. When they are seen, and when their coordination is understood, the university has been seen. That's why this visitor is making a mistake. The university isn't some additional thing in addition to the colleges and the libraries and the dining halls and the, and the sports fields and the whatever. The university is just a collection of those things arranged and interacting in a certain way. And then Ryle goes on to say, his mistake lay in his innocent assumption that it was correct to speak of Christchurch. Christchurch 
is the richest college at Oxford. If you go to Oxford, you'll see Christchurch. It has the biggest, fanciest buildings, and it's right next to the river or whatever, and it's got all these fields or whatever. It's the richest, fanciest college. I didn't go to Christchurch. I went to Exeter, which is a much smaller but very nice college at Oxford. Anyway, the Bodleian Library, the Ashmolean Museum. The Bodleian Library is the big famous library at Oxford, and the Ashmolean Museum is, is some museum. I know where it is, but I didn't really go to the museum. I'm not a museum type. Okay, so let's start this over again. His mistake lay in his innocent assumption that it was correct to speak of Christchurch, the Bodleian Library, the Ashmolean Museum, and the university. To speak, that is, as if the university stood for an extra member of the class of which these other units are members. He was mistakenly allocating the university to the same category as that to which the other institutions belong. Okay, that's the category mistake. You've got all stuff that fits in one category. You've got the colleges, the big fancy library, the museum, you've got that stuff. And then you've got the university. It's a mistake that, to think that the university is in this same category, that it just gets listed along with all of these things. No, no, no. The university is in a different category. The university goes down here because the university is just sort of like a collection of these things arranged and interacting in a certain way. That's the category mistake. It's taking something that fits in a different category and mistakenly lumping it up here in this category. That's the category mistake. You shouldn't do that. And Ryle is going to claim that Descartes is making that same kind of mistake when it comes to the mind. Right? So you've got all of the stuff that the body does. You've got all of the physical interactions and the movements of the body and the movements of the eyebrows and all these things that are happening in the physical world. The mistake that Descartes is making, according to Ryle, is thinking that the mind and mental events like memories and hopes and desires and uh, anger and fear and love and happiness, all of these things in the mind, the mistake is to think that those things are just more stuff in addition to and in the same logical category as, you know, hands and feet and noses and the movement of your eyes and all that sort of stuff. No, 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 Ryle thinks. Mental stuff is just a certain way of thinking about physical stuff, certain arrangements of physical stuff interacting and moving in certain ways, that's all that mental activity is. Here's what Ryle says in the third section of this paper, this is on page 36, about the category mistake that the dualist is making. Minds are things, but different sorts of things from bodies. Mental processes are causes and effects, but different sorts of causes and effects from bodily movements. That's the mistake. The mistake is thinking that the mind is just more stuff, more, more things that causally interact with other things. No, 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 no. It's not just more but slightly different stuff. It's an a way of arranging the first kind of stuff. And so on. Somewhat as the foreigner expected the university to be an extra edifice, rather like a college, but also considerably different. So the repudiators of mechanism the repudiators of mechanism are the dualists, right? The dualists think that everything is mechanical or physical, and so the repudiators of that are the, are the dualists, the adherents of the official doctrine, Descartes. So the repudiators of mechanism represented minds as extra centers of causal processes, rather like machines, but also considerably different from them. Their theory was a paramechanical hypothesis. Paramechanical means sort of mechanical, right? Like paramilitary means not the military, but like sort of like the military, like they dress like the military, but they're not really in the military. That's paramilitary. Paramechanical means sort of mechanical, but not exactly. Ryle is saying that Descartes' mistake is, that, is of thinking of the mind as another kind of thing, like the physical body, just not physical. That's the mistake putting the mind in the same general category as all of the physical stuff. Instead, it's in its own category. It's just a way that that physical stuff is arranged. Let me just end by reading one more sentence from the Ryle reading. This is on page 38. The belief that there is a polar opposition between mind and matter is the belief that they are terms of the same logical type. The idea there is that, look, according to the dualist, 
mind and body are sort of opposed with one another. They're, they're two different sort of competing things. They have different characteristics. They're understood in contrast to one another, right? If you think of the mind and the body in this way, the reason that you think of them in that way is because you're putting them in the same broad category. Like the, the visitor at the university, the visitor at the university who thought that the university was some other thing, separate from and opposed to, in a certain way, the colleges and the library and the museum, that person only thought that because they put the university up in the same logical category as the colleges and the library and the museum. That's the mistake, that's a category mistake, and Ryle thinks that Descartes is making a category mistake.